Bien, vamos ahora a presenciar una charla magistral por parte del doctor Firas al Niaimi, conocido o archiconocido en el mundo de los sistemas lumínicos, y nos va a hablar de la longitud 1940 y del Gentle Max Pro Plus. O sea que, adelante Firas y muchísimas gracias por estar con nosotros. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, good afternoon everyone. It's a great honor for me to be here. I want to thank Sonsolas and Sebastian, the Spanish um, Iberia uh, Candela team for inviting me. I'm sorry, I cannot deliver this talk in Spanish. So this is an opportunity for you to practice your English, uh, okay, and to wake up before lunch. Um, I will gonna have to be speaking fast because I have 15 minutes per talk and I have two talks. But the first one is I'm going to talk about the Frax 1940. I see that is the handpiece that is attached to the Nordlis. If you can see the Nordlis system, you have the fractional handpiece where it says 1940. That is the Frax handpiece. I absolutely love that handpiece. No, I genuinely do. I have all the systems and I have many lasers, which I do. But the Frax 1940 is now the second commonest one that I use after the V-beam. And I will show you why, because this is really um, a new thing that we can add to our patients in terms of the treatments and the results. So we, we all know about the fractional lasers, you know that there's an ablative one, which is the CO2 on the erbium, which was already discussed. When we talk about fractional non-ablative lasers, uh, we talk about this range of wavelengths between 1200 to 2000 nanometer. Because in this range, this is where you get water absorption, but it's not ablative, it's non-ablative. But what is important is where you sit in that range, because not all the wavelengths there are going to behave the same. If you look at 2,000 nanometer, that is roughly the number where it starts to become ablative. So 1940 is very close to 2,000 nanometer. And just remember that, and this is important. So these are the two FRAX handpieces that you can have uh, with an Nordlis platform. So these two FRAX handpieces, these, these are both fractional non-ablative lasers. The first one is 1550, so that's 1550 nanometer. The second one is 1940 nanometer. You can either have them as part of the Nordlis platform, or you can have them alone, let's say, you don't need an IPL because you have an IPL or, or another system. You can have them stand alone. So you can just have the two fractional non-ablative handpieces alone, and that's called Frax Pro. So this is Frax Pro standalone, or you can have them as part of the um, platform. So remember I said wavelengths between 1,200 nanometer and 2,000 nanometer is non-ablative. But there is a difference because 1550 is less, less absorbed by water compared to 1940, because 1940 is very close to 2,000 nanometer. So there is a lot of water absorption, but it's still below the ablative threshold. That means that the interaction in the skin, the tissue interaction, is going to be different. 1550 is going to penetrate deeper, so we use that for dermal remodeling. If we have scars, stretch marks we want to treat, we're going to use the 1550. But because the 1940 is less absorbed by water, it's going to be more superficial. Why? Because as soon as the wavelength hits the skin, it's going to be highly absorbed by the skin because 60 to 70% of the skin is composed of water. So there is a difference between these two wavelengths. 1550, less absorbed by water, therefore penetrates deeper. 1940, highly absorbed by water, still non-ablative, and therefore it's going to be more superficial. And if you look at histology, you can see the difference. With a 1550, the injury is deep, and you're getting into the dermis. So anytime your pathology is in the dermis, scars, wrinkles, stretch marks, you're going to use the 1550. And this was already explained earlier by my colleagues when they were talking about scars, they were talking about the FRAX 1550. But look at the histology and the injury with the 1940. Because it's highly absorbed by water, it's going to remain superficial, which means predominantly it's an epidermal laser, but it's non-ablative. So low downtime, and you don't have the issues or the concerns that you have with the CO2. So you can see that most of the injury is in the epidermis and the superficial papillary dermis. What does that mean? That means we can get improvements in the tone and the texture and the smoothening of the skin, which is for our aesthetic patients 
very important and pleasing. This was already mentioned, um, so you have a scanner width and you can decide, you can choose, for example, if you're treating a large area, you can use a, a, a wide scanner width, but to concentrate on individual areas where you want to have intensive treatments, you can choose a narrow scanner width. Can we get the video to work, please? Just click on the video. This is just to show you how the scanner works. Just click on the video, please. Yeah. So you can see, depending on the scanner width that you choose, it's a scanner. So it's going to scan the dots for you. And you can now, this is moving a bit faster. This is the 12 millimeter scanner width. So you can treat the entire area, for example, the entire cheek. But if you want to concentrate on small areas or work around the eyebrows, for example, you can do the four millimeter. And you can reverse the motion. If you're sitting behind the patient, for example, you can also reverse the motion where we're going to go forward and backward. This is just a little bit of ergonomics. OK, when you look at the screen, this is what you will see. You will see the 10, that is the fluence. So if you want to go a little bit deeper, you're going to increase the fluence. But look, you're still 170 micron deep. So you're very superficial. If you're going to compare this fluence to the 1550, we're going to be around 400 micron. So it is not going to behave the same. So please do not think that you can have the 1550 and use very low fluence and be superficial. Because even with a low fluence with the 1550, you're still very much in the mid dermis. So, you can dictate how deep you want to go. That is the density coverage, 30%. If you want to have a more intense treatment, you can increase the uh, density. If you want to have a more gentle treatment, you can reduce the density. And pass three, that means you need to have three passes to achieve this density. If you want to do a more intense treatment, you can do one or two extra passes. If you want to be more gentle, you can do uh, uh, one pass less. So, 1550 deep in the dermis, 1940 superficial, tone, texture, improvement. So this is what you get. This is why the 1940 is important, because this is when the patient is going to see results. Our aesthetic patients are going to come back with a wow effect. The skin is feeling smoother, nice, even tone. And it's not just pigment. The skin feels better. Female patients are going to say this. The makeup sits nicer. So this is a very good device for the aesthetic patients, particularly if you do a lot of fillers and botulinum toxin. Now, the 1550 is dermal remodeling. So really, in reality, one needs both, and this is why I have both wavelengths, because for those patients where you want to work on the scars, on the stretch marks, you're going to use the 1550, but for the aesthetic patients, when you want to improve on the surface texture, you're going to use the 1940. Now, there is another wavelength, which is the 1927, which is very comparable because they're close. However, the sweet spot is actually 1935, and this is why the 1940 Frax from Candela is somewhat better compared to the 1927, but they work very comparable. So this is Sharon, this is one of my first patients. When I had the 1940, she was one of my first patients. Um, now I could, I could tell Sharon, I'm gonna do a treatment for you and I'll give you 20% improvement in collagen. What does that mean? She's not interested in the percentage of collagen, she wants to look better. That's what she said, make me look better. Now, with the 1940, I don't want you just to look at the pigment, but the skin is feeling smoother. She said, the pigment is cleared, but the skin is feeling smoother. I'm, I'm glowing. I'm getting a lot of compliments. There's nothing nicer for a woman to get compliments, trust me. Now, you can see here, again, pigment, but the skin is feeling smoother. She's getting compliments. Another patient, pigment as well as tone, texture, makeup sitting nicely. Same here. And yes, you can have an IPL. Yes, you can have a Q-switch. You can try all the treatments for the pigments. That's all true. But what you get as an extra here, which you don't get with the others, is just how the skin feels, how smooth and soft it feels. Chest, something also I find usually very difficult and challenging to treat. This is something now. And you can, you can combine that with the IPL. So you can do the IPL if you have poicholoderma or if you have... Uh, a lot of pigmentation, and then finish off with the Frax 1940. Another one. But you can combine as well. So, for example, if you have a peak away, 
You can choose the Pico or the Q-switch for the standout Lentigo, so the Lentigos that you individually see, you can hit those and then move over to the Frax 1940 and treat the entire face. If you have the V-beam perfecter with a compression handpiece, you can do that, okay? You can do HIFU for when tightening is needed, so you can, you can map out the face and you're going to say, Madam, I'm going to do HIFU, I'm going to tighten the face and I'll finish off with Frax 1940. Because these wavelengths rely on water as a chromophore, when we increase the hydration of the skin, when we increase the water content of the skin, the tissue interaction is going to get better. So I usually prehydrate, and it's not just drinking water, but you can do mesohyaluronic acid, increase the hydration of the skin, and your treatment is going to be better. But what's really interesting is we know that from the 1927, we get microchannels in the skin, we get these microscopic cracks in the epidermis, which will allow us for increased transdermal de drug delivery or cosmeceutical delivery. So we can use that. And this is one of my passions. And this is one of the other things that you can use the 1944. So remember, 1940, tone, texture, superficial pigment clearance as an extra bonus, makeup setting nicely, a glow, Women are going to receive compliments, but you can also use it as transdermal cosmeceutical delivery, something that I've been very passionate about. Now, many years ago, I was part of this study where we did a split face study using vitamin C. And we know that when you combine cosmeceuticals with fractional lasers, you're going to get faster healing and lower downtime. But this is a very interesting study on the 1927 which is the wavelength that is very comparable to the 1940. And what they did is they put vitamin C and cosmeceuticals on untreated skin and then treated with the 1927 and put exactly the same cosmeceutical. And guess what? Because of the... This is what you get when you're using the 1940. You get the micro channels, which will allow for increased transdermal delivery of cosmeceuticals. 17 times higher. 17 times higher absorption of the CE ferulic on skin that was pre-treated with the 1927. So in reality, we can use that by treating them with the 1940 and then put any cosmeceutical that you want. And this is exactly what I, what I do. So for photo damage, I use vitamin C. For pigmentation, I use tranexamic acid. For mature skin, for hydration, I'll use hyaluronic acid. You can use resveratrol. You can use what you want. So this is a patient with photo damage. Frax 1940 to clear pigment, tone, texture. You put in vitamin C. And just in case you think, yeah, but that's going to be a single application. I can do that with microneedling. No, because with microneedling, the channels are going to close within six hours. Here, you have an ongoing epidermal injury for weeks. For at least a couple of weeks, you still have the epidermal injury. So I will t tell patients to use an intensive regimen where they're going to use it twice a day. So if I want to, for example, treat pigmentation, and I'm using it with the 1940, I'll apply the tranexamic acid immediately after treatment, but then I will ask them to use that twice a day for the coming two to three weeks. Here, close up for you. Another example, mature skin, pre-treat. Pre-treat with hyaluronic acid, 1940, finish off with hyaluronic acid. You can also pre-treat it with Profilo, for example, um, boosting the skin. Close-up view. It's not just the pigment. It's, there's something about the texture of the skin that improves. You don't need the downtime of the CO2. You can do that in the summer, and it's all fine. Pigmentation, difficult one. Frax 1940, topical tranexamic acid. Frax 1940, topical tranexamic acid. Same here. Frax 1940, topical tranexamic acid. Not just the melasma gets better, the skin feels better, smoother. Here, HIFU followed by 1940, same session. You don't have to do it in the same session, you can bring the patient back in a couple of weeks. Okay, but when someone like this comes in and says, make me look better, with devices, what you can do with low downtime or no downtime. She doesn't need the CO2 for the downtime. You could do the HIFU and you can see the improvement in the jowl. Finish off with the Frax 1940, tone, texture, 
put the vitamin C serum, if it's pigmentation, put the tranexamic acid, and then top it up with hyaluronic acid. Same here. A lot of compliments. Here, again, what you could do is you can use the 4 millimeter, 4 millimeter scanner width, high density, intense treatments on the individual lentigos, then move to the 10 or the 12 millimeter, lower density, and treat the entire area. So focal treatment area on the lentigos, followed by field treatment. Skin type 6, because I can't use 5-FU, uh, so mix steroid with hyaluronidase, inject in the area, thin the skin, Frax 1940, cosmeceutical delivery of tranexamic acid. Flat seboroic keratosis, because it's a flat seboroic keratosis, 6 millimeter width, high density, multiple passes, and it will peel off. Mild rhinophyma, doesn't necessarily need a CO2 in this case. Twice a week, isotretinoin, V-beam, pulse dilator for the vascular component, and then Frax 1940 for the texture. This is a very common problem. We have many Pakistanis and Indians in London, and this is one thing that they hate. Frax 1940 with SkinCeuticals Lip Antioxidant Repair, okay? And you can apply just also a very little bit of tranexamic acid solution, and it clears nicely. So, why was Sharon pleased? Because if you look at what is the ideal skin of beauty, if someone wants to look prettier, smooth skin, porcelain light, glow, nice light reflection, even tone, no pigment, no blemishes, and look at what you can achieve with the Frax 1940. With the Frax 1940, you can have a smoother skin with a glow. The light is going to reflect nicely because you have a smooth, even surface of the skin, which means the light reflection is going to be nice. This is why they're going to look nicer and the makeup is going to sit nice as well. So once again, this patient is happy, not just because the pigment has cleared, but the tone, the texture, overall, the improvements in the skin quality and the light reflection. So in conclusion, the Frax Pro is a sophisticated fractional non-ablative laser dual wavelength. In the Frax Pro, you can have the 1550 for deep dermal remodeling, and then you have the 1940 for more superficial um, injury, as I, show, as I showed you. Uh, I like to use it for enhanced cosmeceutical delivery. Um, it has already soft cooling, it already has soft cooling embedded, and remember you can adjust the scanner width, which will allow you to customize the treatment. So really the way I describe it, it's superficial rejuvenation, superficial rejuvenation. It's an epidermal targeted laser without the need for ablation. And I think that is what makes this wavelength and this laser unique because we don't really have many other alternatives other than the ablative lasers. Thank you.